Hi there, and welcome to this lesson on Pure Mathematics 4. In this lesson, we're on chapter 7, 7.7, and we're considering position vectors again. Now, if you have watched the rest of the videos from chapter 7, there is nothing new in this lesson. Everything we're considering, we have already considered in previous lessons. Uh, nevertheless, there may be some value from the point of view of revision. First of all, three-dimensional vectors, they're described by adding a third direction, z, which is perpendicular to both the x and y axes. So in this diagram, the x and y axes would define a horizontal plane, and z would be vertically upwards from that plane. If we consider two points, a and b, uh, with coordinates 2, 3, 5, and 4, 5, 1, the first thing is with sketches, there's very, very rarely any value in drawing the coordinate axes. They do just make the sketch more confusing. So I wouldn't draw the axes, but I would draw the origin. The origin is always helpful to have. Getting rid of the axes, then that's what the sketch would become. The position vector of A is the vector from the origin to the point A. It's the vector which starts at O and ends at A. And position vectors are extremely similar to coordinates. They always have exactly the same numbers. Coordinate is written horizontally. A position vector is written vertically as a column vector. So A235 are the coordinates of a point in space. The position, ve position vector OA or A is 235 as a column vector. And it really just tells you how you would get to A from the origin. But the concept of a coordinate, the concept of a position vector, they are extraordinarily similar. Uh, and for most points, for, for most work that you do, you can really consider coordinates and position vectors as being the same thing. If you know the position vectors of any two points, you can find the vector between those two points. So the vector from A to B would be AO plus OB, which is minus A plus B. And we can always rewrite that as B minus A. So the vector from A to B is the position vector of B, take away the position vector of A. OK, let's have a look at an example. So first of all, you're asked to write down the position vectors of A and B in IJ and K notation. Then find the vector from A to B, both as a column vector and in IJ and K notation. And lastly, you're asked to work out the magnitude of the vector AB writing your answer in third form. That means you're giving the exact answer, which will include square roots. OK, have a go at this question yourself. Pause the video and come back to me when you're ready. OK, let's have a look. So first of all, the position vectors of A and B in I, J and K notation. Uh, the position vector of A would be 2i plus 3j plus 5k, and the position vector of B would be 4i plus 5j plus 1k. Part two asks us to find the vector ab, both as a column vector and in ij and k notation. Well, the vector from a to b is the position vector of b, take away the position vector of a, which would be 4, 5, 1, take away 2, 3, 5, which is a column vector would be 2, 2, minus 4, and in ij and k notation would be 2i plus 2j minus 4k. And then lastly, we were asked to find the magnitude of AB, giving our answer in third form. Sometimes they would say, give the exact answer. If they say, give the exact answer, they mean in third form, leaving the square root. So the magnitude of AB is the magnitude of 2, 2, minus 4, which using Pythagoras is the square root of 2 squared plus 2 squared plus minus 4 squared, which is root 24, which you could simplify to 2 root 6, and that's what they want. That would be writing the answer in third form. They don't want it as a, a rounded decimal. OK, that gets us to the end of this lesson. If you've got the textbook, turn to page 122 and have a go at exercise 7G. Thanks very much for listening and 